Okay, good afternoon, everybody, and good morning to those in Western Australia. Today, we have Managing Director of Tesoro Resources, Zef Reeves, here to talk about last week's um, drilling results and uh, what's going on at El Zorro Project in Chile. Over to you, Zef. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Uh, yeah, obviously, we had a bit of news out last week. We've hit some more gold out at Tenera East, which is starting to look pretty promising. I might just share my screen and then everyone can see what I'm talking about. Uh, so this was the section that was in the announcement. Um, and there's some results out here to the east of Tenera. So the main Tenera area is in the middle here with the block model outline shown in the pale pink. Now this zone out here at Tenera East is starting to be quite significant. Um, we're not seeing the same widths and grades as we see in the main Tenera deposit, but this is, I guess, an add-on to the main deposit and certainly beginning to um, be predictable. Uh, it's been drilled over 600 metres of strike now. It's extensive up and down dip. And, and then why I say it's a good add-on is that our pit or proposed pit's going to push out here and instead of having to um, grab waste from out here, it's now going to have mineralisation to, to pick up. And what it's actually going to allow us to do is to take the bottom of the pit lower because it'll reduce the overall stripping ratio. So, you know, I think people are, bit, uh, you know, probably fairly cognizant of the fact that we've been continuing to release some fairly fantastic drill results since the resource was released in the middle of the year. Um, this is going into a, a, um, a very good deposit. It's ticking all the boxes. Uh, you know, and it's just, um, the more we do to it, the better it's getting. And these types of results outside of the main Tenera area uh, really begin to add to it. The other thing I would like to just walk you through to show you the context of this and also to show you the context of all the other drilling and drilling results that we've been doing is just um, what this looks like in 3D. Um, so this, I'm hoping everyone can see this. Peter, let me know if you can't. Um, this is just the drilling at Tenera. Uh, so Tenera in the middle here. Uh, there's some holes out to Drone Hill here. Um, and then the Tenera East drilling out to the east here. So if I just put the uh, pit shell on, so that's the pit shell. And if I just tilt this, look so that we're looking north. So this is all the drilling out here to the east. And you can see how continuous this mineralization is out here. So this is a big distance. On top of that drilling out at Tenera Ace, this is all the drilling that wasn't included in that maiden resource estimate um, that say they're extending the deposit at depth and along strike to the south. You can see the colors on the drill traces there are uh, assays. So we've got gold in all of those holes. There's a whole big new zone of gold mineralization out here to the uh, west southwest. And a lot of that's also quite close to surface and was, wasn't included in the initial resource so you know again the more we drill this the bigger it's getting um, uh, Zef, can you give us some sense of scale on that image there uh, just um you know, width and, and length and, and depth and is this also um extending um, above the um, surface as well yeah so if i so from a uh, length perspective you know that entire pit there is uh, 900 meters long. And then if we look, uh, if we just look to the north, you can see all the drilling that's outside. This is looking straight down the northern extent of it. So from the top of the pit down to some of those intercepts at the bottom, it's 550 meters. So and this is this is always the interesting thing that I found about um, Turner was that the the actual pit starts above the surface that that um, um, outcropping uh, hillside, you'll be taking gold mineralized um, ore from straight away. Yeah, that's right. So once we, if we were to zoom in on here, I'll just turn that pit off so people can see, there's a lot of gold mineralization at surface here. You can see the drill hits in the colors there. Um, some fantastic drill intercepts at depth. And um, 
you know, the, just the scale of this is starting to get bigger and bigger all the time. Um, obviously, there's a fair, fairly high degree of frustration with where we are with the share price at the moment. Um, I think the market's just not getting it at all, and I don't know why. Um, you know, I challenge investors and other and people to go and look at some other projects are out there and see if they're able to consistently deliver the results that we've, we've been delivering and starting to demonstrate some serious scale here. And, you know, one of the issues that we've got is, you know, when do we pull the trigger on the next maiden, on the, the next resource update? Um, you know, we think this has got a lot of growth in it yet to go. So we're going to keep drilling. Um, so we're, we won't get to a, maiden, uh, to a resource update this year because we've just got too much infill and extensional drilling to do. Um, and it's going to be a significant increase in, in that resource inventory if we just get a few more, a bit more drilling into it. So really, you know, as I said, that scale is starting to get significant. Um, you know, the whole thing from one side to the other, if we go all the way out to Tenera Ace, it's a kilometre wide now. Yep. Wherever we find these rocks, they've got gold in them. Wherever we find them interacting with the structures, they're well mineralized. So that Tenera East area is really starting to, you know, you can see where that sits. It's out here. There's a lot of gold in these holes the outside of the pit. There's gold down here, which is now that pit's going to want to drive down on all of this down the bottom now um, once we incorporate Tenera East. So the focus is to delineate further resources at Tenera East and also these extensions that we're seeing everywhere, particularly in the southern zone. We think we've found some big extensions also to the north. Um, so we're going to continue to drill uh, up there. Um, and I'll just quickly change the view on this. If and if the, the, the scale in this is, is quite extraordinary. It's almost a kilometre long, half a kilometre wide and, and almost a half a kilometre deep. It's, it's going to be a significant uh, operation once in production. But given its location uh, with Drone Hill and Buzzard and, and other uh, targets, there's likely to be um, multiple pits. Is that where you see this um, growing towards? Yeah, look, there's certainly potential for that. Now, our team's on the ground now uh, doing a lot of mapping and sampling to the north of us. And they've now mapped those, uh, those intrusive rocks to over four and a half kilometres north of Tenera and they continue over to the next valley. Um, so, you know, we're optimistic that we'll pick up some other mineralized zones through that. Uh, that we've just got to get through the work. Um, you know, people often ask, why aren't we going all over the place and, and drilling holes into all these targets? Well, we work through the work systematically to find the target properly so we don't waste too many drill meters testing um, spurious targets. and. I guess the more work that we're doing, the more we understand um, of the system. But, it, um, you know, and I think it was alluded to in the, in the new generation um, gold presentation I gave a couple of weeks ago and that was released to the ASX that uh, we think this is a new gold district um, with significant scale. We, we believe that these intrusive rocks that host the gold are over, uh, occurring in a zone that's over 20 kilometres long now certainly attracting all the attention of um, the who's who of uh, mining companies operating in Chile, um, including Yamana Gold, who have made a large land grab next to us, but we think they're outside of the prospective zone. Um, so everyone's got a keen eye on us, um, and we're hopeful that the market will begin to understand the, the scale and the simplicity of, of this project going forward. So uh, the team's focused on continuing to drill out Tenera. Um, obviously, you can see the amount of drilling that's been put in there now. So we're also upgrading that uh, classification of, of the resource. So we have more material into indicated. Uh, there's been a lot of work done on reinterpretation uh, of the um, system. And we're starting to see that translate to better continuity of the, of the higher grade zones and also potentially increasing the grade across the entire deposit. So. Um, you know, people ask how, how big is this going to be? It's a bit, how long is a piece of string? We haven't drilled the end of it as by, by a long shot. And a good example is a hole down here, right down in the south, 
You can see the pink discs on it, they're high grade samples, um, open all around it, and it continues to be open in all directions. So we'll continue to increase that footprint um, and you know, build that resource inventory up to a scale that we think is really going to be a significant gold mine. But at this stage, it's ticking all the boxes, not only in terms of potential resource size, um, but resource geometry, ease of mining, metallurgy, location, and so on and so forth. So, you know, the, we've just got to stay focused on doing what we're doing. We've demonstrated that we can get the work done. We haven't stopped in the last 18 months. So the team is uh, able to deliver and um, we'll just keep uh, continuing to do that work to, to get this project into production. Zef, it is a massive system here that, is it, that uh, every new step out drill hole reports some mineralization. Could it be one of the largest gold systems in Chile? In terms oh, of this, being a new uh, one? Look, at this, at, at this stage, it's not. Um, certainly has potential to be, uh, but we're, you know, we're just starting to, to do some of that more regional um, review of some of the areas as well. And if, if um, we see those rocks continue up to the north there and they've got gold in them, then there's certainly that potential. But, you know, keeping in mind, there is some giant deposits in Chile up in that epithermal territory, um, such as uh, the Kinross operation at Maracunga and, and Goldfield's new Solaris Norte mine, which has just been permitted. I mean, they, they're 10 million ounce deposits. Um, there's a question here that's come in, Zef, uh, who's thanks very much for taking the time to speak with us today. And, and I think that's uh, it's well said. You've consistently come out and engaged with shareholders and talked about the results and explained what's going on. Um, the question here is, do we have any estimates on when drill results from Drone Hill or Toro Blanco might be coming through? Um, did you intersect the tonal light host there? Yeah, look, the host rocks are up there, whether they're mineralised, uh, well or not, um, we don't know yet. Uh, that some of those samples are in the lab, so the lab's queuing through those. They've been um, a little bit slower. Things have picked up in Chile in terms of um, demand on exploration and mining services. Uh, they were they lagged a little bit behind in the demand on all of that sort of stuff to what Australia had experienced. But we're starting to see that probably kick in a bit now. So assays have been a bit slower. But um, needless to say, even if we get a sniff up there, it, it's quite significant in, you know, telling us that that system is continuing to the north. Um, and we've also been doing a lot of surface sampling right up in the north, uh, so about four kilometres north of Tenera, uh, where we found the host rock. So, um, you know, we're optimistic we'll pick up some, some other drill hits in some of those targets, uh, but the tonal lights are there. Uh, they look like they should have gold in them, but the assays will tell. And Zef, the Tenera East hits last week, are they associated with the faults like at Turnera? Yeah, there is some uh, faulting through there. So uh, that um, is controlled by predominantly north-south faults. And, you know, I, I suppose this um, view on the late frog sort of gives you an idea of the three loads that were or higher grade zones if you like you can see that pink trend on that north south trend there and there's another one that's uh, developed um, to the eastern part of the deposit that's that deeper mineralization but we're starting to see some exceptional continuous high grades in there that could go underground and also another zone out in the west here, which we've picked up more recently, and not much of this was included in the initial resource. So that's those north-south faults, but what we're finding in our modelling as well is that they're linked together with northwest um, stock works and, and vein systems. So at Tenera East, the intrusives are not as wide. So as soon as we hit them, they, they've got this predictable gold zone in them. Um, so we've been able to now, um, you know, we've hit gold down in these holes here, all the way up to the north here, 655 metres of strike. So we've got a whole bunch of infill there. The other, the other promising part about a lot of the mineralisation at Tenera East is, is relatively shallow. So you're talking less than 150 metres downhole distance, so maybe 90, 80 to 90 metres below surface. Uh, so it's going to really help 
um, stripping ratio going forward. And um, a fair bit of tightly spaced and infill drilling that you can see in the diagram there, which will help you with the, the updated resource. What's your estimate for when uh, you, you might be able to report that to the market? Yeah, look, it won't be this year. Um, we're hopeful for early in the new year, but look, and that's not um, that's not a, a function of being able to get the work done. That's just a function of how big we think it could grow to. So we just want to get some more drilling. Obviously, we've got you know drill hits like this that haven't got a hole. You know, the next closest hole with decent mineralisation in them is 100 metres away, nearly. So. Uh, you've got a lot of infill there in those zones to go. We've got um, open mineralisation to the north here in two zones as well. That has got no drilling north of it. Um, and we're just doing some drilling up here now. Uh, so if we can see that continuing to grow and, you know, it could be the difference, you know, I don't know what the numbers are going to be, but, you know, for argument's sake, the difference between a million and 1.5 or 2 million ounces, then we'll probably just keep drilling it. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's sort of like, it's the difficulty, but also the uh, plus to this um, resource and this project is that at some stage you need to define the outside of, of the uh, project the way you'll stop drilling and say, right, this is going to be our, our pit design and this is going to be our resource estimate. But if it keeps on going, um, it, that really makes it difficult to define that endpoint because you're potentially um, um, not making maximising the the results that you've got. Yeah, look, we're obviously we're running you know back of the ruler um, calculations and studies all the time on where we think this is going and also on what we've actually got our hands on now off the drilling that we've already completed and really want to get to a point where the indicated level is high enough as well that we can you know get a scoping study out more or less at the same time um, and demonstrate the economics of this deposit because obviously internally we're liking what we're seeing that's why we're continuing on with our work plan um, but we need to get that indicated level up to a uh, a point as well whereby we can plug that into a scoping study that can be released to the market. Right. And there's, look, there's been a few questions around the potential size and a, and a decision to move towards feasibility studies. Um, in your mind, what would you like that target to be? Uh, if we got to, you know, I think I've said fairly continuously that to become a significant producer in this type of deposit in this location you probably want to be knocking out 80 to 100,000 ounces a year initially out of an open low cost open pit operation so in order to convert enough resource to an actual mining inventory you probably want to be seeing a resource of um, over one and a half million ounces um, certainly there's plenty of potential to be able to do that uh, we've just got to get more drilling into it. And uh, Zef, the drilling's pretty continuous there. Um, is it all funded um, for the next program or the current program? Yeah, obviously we've just done that placement. So uh, we've topped up a bit of cash there, which has got us you know, well funded to do the work that we do. We've got that um, share purchase plan out for existing shareholders, but obviously that's struggling under the, existing, the current share price. Um, but look, there's no, you know, that doesn't put us under pressure. That that's there for um, for existing shareholders to participate at the same terms as as that placement was made. And look, there's plenty of groups that we have engaged um, in the conversation with about El Zorro and Tesoro, who are very um, upbeat on what they're saying, and they can see that there's a real project here who uh, potentially could take up shortfall out of that um, SPP as well. So, um, but we'd like, you know, if our existing shareholders um, took it up, it'd be fantastic and a good outcome. All right, there's a few other questions come through. We might, uh, um, I'll ask some of those questions, um, those questioners to send through those questions to me, Peter Taylor, or Peter at nwrcommunications.com.au. I'll see that they're answered or, or put through to Zeph as well. 
Um, I think we've pretty much covered most of the questions in general here today. Zef, um, in, anything else you'd like to say in summary regarding uh, where we're at and, and what we're looking for in the next near term? Uh, yeah, look, there's a few things that we'll, you know, we'll continue to get drilling results out and so on, but, you know, we'll hopefully get some uh, exploration results out on some of these um, big extensional targets and, and some of the extensional drilling as well. But, uh, look, we just um, continue to try to get uh, shareholders and new investors um, engage with the company and to understand that this is a real project. Um, you know, we, we really are optimistic that this has got the, um, all the right criteria to be taken through to mining. And now it really is just a matter of, of what the ultimate resource size is going to be. And then outside of that, there's massive blue sky exploration potential. So uh, current share price, the company's severely undervalued. So there's a massive value proposition there for for people to um, to to get involved with Tesoro, and we're hoping that uh, you know the tide will turn in terms of the share price, and people begin to understand what this really is. All right, thanks very much, Zef. Thanks for everybody for tuning in today. As I said, please send your questions in that you didn't get answered today to Peter at nwrcommunications.com.au, and I'll make sure they're answered. And we'll look forward to hearing from Zef as this uh, drilling continues. Cheers. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Peter.